Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about my content flow. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have a question. When it comes to things that go beyond junior level, which is which there is way too much content already of, who do you follow on YouTube, newsletters or whatever? Thanks as always, I, l I love Khalil Stemler. Okay, yeah, uh, I don't know about Khalil, but uh, for me, it's really hard, I would say. I, I would even go as far as to say that I don't, th I can't think of anybody that I fall, if we're, because I'm assuming here that we're if we're talking about something that goes beyond junior level that's kind of a broad question i would say i have people that i follow that i would consider where what they are teaching is beyond junior level but it's in a very specific space so i love rust the rust programming language and for me i mean learning the basics of rust has I mean I'm still learning things about Rust even today because it's not my full-time profession so I don't get as much practice as I would like I would love to to actually do it full-time in a more serious environment but that's just not in the cards for me right now but people the two content providers that I have found to because I've grown past the point where where um, I don't need the bare bone basics anymore. I want some more in-depth, hands-on projects to take a look at and see how people actually work with it. And so my favorite content writer is probably probably Ryan Levick. He does stre he streams a lot of uh, different content that I think is really cool to have a look at, where he looks at different different projects and like different aspects of system levels development or at the very least fairly low in many cases lower levels of development which I think is really fascinating because it's not something I mean the last time I had to do that level of development was back in school when we did C and C++ and so forth it's not something that me as a web developer I do on a daily basis but I really find it interesting so it's really cool that he sits and actually does this sort of stuff and I think John Jengset, I hope I pronounced his last name correctly now. I think he's Norwegian actually, which makes him extra cool. Uh, does a lot of interesting stuff as well. I watched a video not that long ago where he was attempting to re-implement the Java hash map in Rust. And like, I learned a lot from that, which is really cool about uh, mut uh, internal mutations and things like that. Uh, so those would be, for Rust, my favorite people to follow, which I, f I subscribe to their channels and I try to follow them fairly consistently. Uh, but in the programming space for web, there's really not much that I can give you. What I usually do, which is usually the case for all the all the people that I know as well, like the, my CTO and like my manager and so forth, the people who uh, who have a lot of experience, they usually tell me the same sort of things. They what they do is practically is lit we do the same thing. We all do the same thing. You subscribe to newsletters such as Change Log or Front End Weekly or Node uh, Node Weekly or things like that. And through that channel, you'll get an I, you'll get some articles here and there that might be useful to you and you will learn about the most recent news of course but that's not really something that goes beyond union level or maybe it is depending on how you define it but other than that I have a RSS feed where I try to gather all the best sources of information that I can find and usually a lot of it comes from medium and then it really comes down to skimming through uh, hundreds of articles and I'm not joking I can look I can easily go through a h over a hundred articles where I just know that nope 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 know that already nope 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 and like continue until you find some gems here and there and that is the process it that's the thing that's like at least how I experience it. And I, if you think about it, I think this is a fairly natural turn of events. You s 
so you start by practically having to read every single thing when you're in the beginning of things because you don't know all that much but as you go along you start to loop on things because you start learning them and all of a sudden you just realize you, you start to realize that oh yeah there's a because that's the thing that's that's why there's so much content and I think that's so great about IT in general there's so many people who are on their own journey of discovery I mean guys if like a lot of the stuff that I put out on these videos is just my take on things that people have already written something about it's it's normal you're going to recreate something or you're going to repeat something that somebody else has already done that's it's inevitable and as the consumer of this once you have learned all of these things that's that's where you're left off you have to go through stuff that you already know or things that you feel is not so relevant to you until you find something that might just be relevant so there's a lot of uh, uh, th th it's rare these days that I find anything that is beyond a junior level or an introductionary level that I find to be really really useful information there's articles here and there but nothing consistent but for me it's not so valuable to to try to find some to, fi to try to find content that is at that level all that much where I don't spend as much time uh, as I said, like I spend so much time trying to find it that I don't actually like spend so much time studying it. But that doesn't mean that I'm not learning things. My personal learning um, process right now is much more uh, uh, focused on things that I'm not so familiar with or things that I know I want to get better at. Cybersecurity is something that I look into uh, quite a lot right now. And for me, like my favorite content providers for cybersecurity these days is actually on YouTube. So one is the Cyber Mentor. I have a, like, uh, I don't know. I have. I think that that channel is really great. I like he has put out. They there's been some really good videos and courses on cybersecurity, introductionary level and like beyond. And he does in many cases. I feel there's um, a little bit of a kindred spirit going on. Kindred spirit going on there, because he really does tell tell it like it is. Like he really he really tries to go for accurate information, and he try he doesn't try to. He doesn't try to do the classical entrepreneur thing and tries to sell you things over and over and over. He really, in many cases, just focuses on providing answers to questions and trying to just help people out. And I really respect that. I really like that. Uh, and then there's a bug crowd, which I think is really great as well, which is like there's a lot of useful information coming from bug crowd if you want to get into pen testing or bug bounty hunting and things like that. And I think these things are very interesting. It's not necessarily something that I might want to do as a full time profession, but it's stuff that is extremely useful for me where I am today in my career, because as I've told you before, at some point, you learn enough about web and full stack development, front and back end and infrastructure and things like that, where you start to have to kind of look at more holistic things and security is a big thing in IT. It's, uh, it's something really worth looking into once you have the experience guys. Uh, it's uh, it may not be the most important thing for you if you're right now trying to learn just how to work with CSS but uh, when you have a few years it it becomes more relevant and then apart from that I I'm trying to find good sources of information on machine learning because I th there are a few problems that I think is really interesting in that space that uh, I mean there's the there's so many different times that I've had a need to build some basic classifier or something that can make it help me determine what type of information I'm dealing with. We actually have a few of those projects at work as well, which I think is really interesting. And then I've, I look at languages or frameworks that I'm not that familiar with or that I haven't spent enough time with. So Free Code Camp is, well, you probably know about that one. It has a lot of good introductionary information, and I mean, it's not like I don't watch any of that. There was a really nice uh, set of videos that came out for Amazon, like uh, just going through all their services. And although I have worked with Amazon, I have nowhere near the experience needed in order to know all of those services. Like they have such a range of products that it's insane. And having just a walkthrough, I took a weekend there actually when I had a bit of a cold and just watched through it. 
okay they I can I felt that that was pretty good information it, it was really interesting and relevant so what I want you to take away from this is that I can't really help you with finding good sources of information that goes beyond a like the the introductionary phase because there's not that much being done in that space and I would guess that the, re the main reason behind that is because usually content providers like the ones who are actually trying to make a living or like trying to make uh, some money from this like a lot of the time that's not the money isn't really in these experience type of uh, videos or blogs or things like that well blogs is a different thing but like usually if you're if you want to pull people in uh, you usually have to be a little more a little bit more specific you have to produce a more clear value proposition and it's much hard like it's it's very hard to create some a good sales pitch if that makes sense or like some like a strategy for for how to grow your personal brand or your company or something like that if all you're really offering is things that are a bit more advanced because usually that's not uh, it's not something that people are searching for it's not something that is uh, it's not the sort of thing at least in my experience that a lot of people are going to pay money to get at because at the end of the day there is not that many people who know that they're looking for that sort of stuff so that makes I suppose my channel very uh, mo n even more niche than it already is if the bathtub wasn't enough for you uh, because the only people that actually have any chance of finding the stuff that I'm making is people who have already realized that wow I already kinda know the basics and then they realize that well there's not that much stuff that goes beyond the basics and that's where I try to give some experience and some insight but I, I for one go way too broad I'm basically just sitting and talking about any, anything programming and if uh, you want to do something more serious or more advanced content you're still gonna have to be focused on things that are advanced in a very specific space and that's not that's just not what I what I do and I can't really find anybody who can put the word advanced in front of any type of content and then really really deliver that on a consistent basis it's it's a really hard thing that's uh, that's at least how i look at it have a great day